Do you want to improve your doubles game? Then I would recommend you to try these three great exercises. Before we move into this video, it would mean a lot to me and I know to Morten Frost as well if you take a second to subscribe to our YouTube channel, then we would be able to provide a lot of new great badminton content. Exercise one, that's a rear court exercise. Basically it's a multi feeding where one is, is having a lot of shuttles, 12 to 20 shuttles I would say, and you just do random multi feeding to the rear court. The one doing the exercise, their job is to get to, to the shuttle as soon as possible and hit it as high as possible. It's a doubles exercise, so you really need to be quite powerful in your movement and quite explosive in any shot of these multi-feeding exercises. You need to remember still, even though it's a double exercise, that you don't just do smashes. You need to do variations in your game. Sometimes you do steep smashes, sometimes you do a bit higher smashes, sometimes you do drop shots. Do a lot of variations. It's very important also in doubles to have a lot of variations from the rear court. So if we try to take this exercise step by step, we have one feeder, he or she would stay in the middle of the court and then you just do random multi feeding to the rear court. The height of your shuttles do vary at those. Sometimes they can come a bit more flat and sometimes put a, a bit more height into it. So that's the job as the feeder. The one doing the exercises, as I mentioned before, get to the shuttle as early as possible. Though it's very important to remember that you just don't stand at the rear core. You need to hit the shuttle, move a bit forward, and then time it to your next shuttle. So that's really, really important that you do. Don't stand on the rear court only because that's not realistic as a movement in your double game. So even though we do multi-feeding exercises, what we would aim to do is to have as much as a match-like feeling as possible. So, so that's what we want to create. Therefore, we need to be really cautious in how we move on court, even though we know where the shuttle is approximately coming. So hit the shuttle, move a bit forward. Hit the shuttle, move a bit forward. So the second exercise here, that's a net flat exercise for the one doing the exercise. When you are a feeder in this exercise, you should stay as you are somewhat in a defensive position. That means you perhaps need to take one step back from the center of the court. The feeder's job here is to do a lot of quick feeding. Some of them are flat, some of them are a bit more drop shot like. We try to make it similar to when you are in the offense at the net and somebody's at the defense and they do drives and they do block shots and you need to be super quick at that. So that's the feeder's job in this exercise. The one doing this exercise, of course, needs to keep their racket high. But what's a key, key thing is your racket movement. Don't do big racket movements because then you are too slow on the net. You need to have small pokes to the shuttle and then be ready again for the next one. The footwork is also super important. So you hit a shuttle and then you stay on your feet. Don't stay too grounded on your heels because that would slower your movement here. So you need to stay super active at your feet so you always are able to get to the net or stay ready for the flat drives. So footwork again, super, super important. So one thing I would like to focus on as the feeder is how you feed. Because it's not realistic that if I feed to, let's say, the forehand side and the next shuttle, I just put it straight to the backhand side all the way using the full court at the net. Again, this is not realistic in double. That would be your partner to cover that. So you really need to find the balance, creating a big court for the one doing the exercise, but not creating a too big court, which is not realistic. So I would say in all our videos, the feeder is always the key to make this a successful exercise. So this net flat exercise, what we would like to simulate on court is again, when you are having the offense at the net and your opponent are having a solid defense and getting a lot of drives back. So that is what we would like to, to simulate, that you're always ready at the net and eventually get the net kill. The next exercise is a, is a very explosive, it's a smash exercise going from side by side. It's a pretty classic doubles multi-feeding exercise. That's the difference I would say between doubles and singles where you don't get that exact movement in singles, but in doubles you actually can get the movement 
from side to side. So again, if we focus on the feeder's job, you need to feed side by side. You really need to get that timing so, so the one doing the exercise are able to jump towards the shuttle and do the smash and then not feed too far so they're still able to get to the other side and do a smash. You can't do it too fast, but you can't do it too slow either. I can't really give you a rule of thumb here. I think you need to look to the one doing the exercise and look at their speed, their capabilities, and then match your feeding towards that. The height of your feeding, I would say, is slightly flat. It shouldn't be tall lifts here. So it is a bit more flat lifts that you play from side to side. So that is the key thing as the feeder. So let's go to the one doing the exercise where you position yourself on the court is, is not at the rear court, but it's not at the center of the court. So I would say it's between the center and between the rear court approximately. And then of course you get the feeding, you jump out to it in, in your forehand, you do the smash, quickly recover, get to the next side, you do a two-step jump in your around the head, do the smash, land, recover, try to get to the forehand again. So you won't get the rotation in your body. You really need the power in your stomach, in your arm, to, to be able to generate the power. And it's, a, I would say, both on the forehand and on the uh, around the head side, it's a two-step jump. As I mentioned, it's maximum power. Just give it all you have. It's a bit tough, this exercise, so I wouldn't recommend perhaps using 20 shuttles in the multi feeding, but somewhere between 12 to 16. And then it's just, yeah, maximum power. Go for straight smashes as, uh, as a beginning, and then you can always uh, do some variation to it. If we look at one I have at least seen, on YouTube, a top player doing this exercise, doing it super powerful. It could be Xing Jiwei from, from China. So we have taken you through three exercises to become a better double player. So one was the rear court exercise, the second one was the net flat exercise, and the third one was the smash side to side. Try these three exercises. It requires a lot of practice to master them, but I think it's three core exercises if you want to become a, a good doubles player. If you want to learn more about uh, badminton doubles exercises, we actually do have created a playlist on our YouTube channel just for doubles exercises. So go and check that out if you're interested in learning more.